<laughs> hey guys, Orly Shannon here. Welcome back to the DIY designer and this 110 degree LA heat. For some reason, I've decided to shoot outside, which my brother is thrilled with. One of the times I don't love you. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, but it's okay because we are going to make a project that is so cool, we will forget the sweltering heat outside. I'm gonna show you guys how to make these absolutely fabulous macrame lawn chairs. Now, my favorite one that I've made so far is the macrame love seat. This was an old love seat. I found it on a Craigslist type site called Offer Up. It was 40 bucks and I ripped out all the old webbing and I created this incredible piece. This is one of those statement pieces that everyone that comes to my house dies over. They all joke that they're gonna try to steal it. It's really, really cool. And if you don't find a love seat, you can always do a little lawn chair like this one that I did. Obviously, totally different colors, really bright pop, um, but the same exact technique, same exact effect. There are 40 different colors of this cording that you can buy. So depending on the color combinations you create, it can work seamlessly with whatever furniture you have. So I'm gonna show you the technique. I'm gonna show you how to transform this one into a beautiful brand new piece. Um, and let's get started. No reason to sit out here any longer than necessary. No reason at all. No reason at all. None, no reason. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the old webbing. Now each chair is completely different, so just follow your chair. Some of them you're gonna need a screwdriver. This one, all I had to do was cut and the little tabs that held it in place came right out. So here is our empty frame, this is our base. So you wanna go ahead and take your craft cord and you're gonna keep it on the roll. So create a double knot. This is called a square knot, just two really, really strong knots at the base of your chair. And we're gonna start doing our vertical ones. You're gonna work in a loop. So you can see I have that loop on the top. That's exactly how we're gonna go each time. So you're gonna go underneath the seat and over the top. The very first one goes on the outer edge. So you're gonna take your large crochet hook, put it through the loop and pull really, really tight. This is going to keep it in place. That thing is not gonna move. Now you're gonna go back under the bottom and over the top. This is how you're gonna do all of them. Now again, for your very first one on the bottom, you wanna go on the outside. This is going to grab all three into one knot here. So you can see I'm taking it, I'm going over the outside edge, grabbing that very first row that we created. Put your macrame hook inside, pull really tight, and now we've got one on each, one on the top, one on the bottom. Now again, you're gonna go over the bottom, and when you get to the top, this is how we're gonna do the rest of them now. You're gonna go through the middle instead of on the outside edge like the first one. So go through the middle, drop that little loop onto the hook of your macrame hook and pull it through the first one. This is how each stitch is created, so you just wanna finagle with it, use your fingers if you need to. Now you can see, I'm coming around the bottom, grab that little hook through the center, drop it onto the hook and pull it through your first stitch. This is how we create each one of our knots. You can see it, I'm pulling it through. You can turn it away from you if you want and sometimes that allows it to drop through much easier. But you can see how pretty that starts to look on the bottom, each of those knots. It's decorative but incredibly strong. Yeah, it was too much. So now I've done all of it and I'm really at the edge. This is where I decide to cut off my excess. I only have about an inch left. So I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna go through the bottom and back up through the top, seeing about how much of my craft cord I need in order to finish it off. Now you cut it off, and this is how you finish each end off. Take your loop and remove the macrame hook, keeping your finger in place to hold it. You're gonna need that little loop, so don't let it collapse on itself. Put your finger in place. Now take the last ring, go on the very outside, and pull it through the loop. This is going to clean finish your bottom edge. Now your bottom is ready to go. Pull super tight. Keep it in, you don't need to do a double knot here because we're actually gonna go through the top. So again, go underneath the bottom bar of your seat just like we've been doing, over the top, and now remove the macrame hook, keeping your finger in place so that loop stays in existence. You just don't want that loop to disappear. So I'm putting my finger in place. I'm now taking the end of my craft cord. So see, I'm gonna go on the outside edge because I wanna grab that very last row that I did. Push it through the loop and now pull really tight. Now because this is the very end, we do need to do another knot here. So right here I'm gonna do a simple loop, and when you're pulling it tight, kind of pull and push at the same time, that way it gets right against that edge. Don't worry about this tail, we're gonna deal with it later. All right, so now it's time to do our horizontal stripes. We're gonna begin the same way that we did on the other one, creating a simple double square knot here. Just pull super tight, obviously it's the beginning and very important. Now we're gonna work 
in that loop again, right? So you get it into kind of a double loop. And I decided for my pattern that I wanted to go over three and under three over three and under three. That's what's gonna create the pattern and I'm gonna start to stagger it as I work my way down. When you get to the edge, we're gonna do the same thing. The very first one needs to go on the outside edge. So pull it towards the top, put your macrame hook in and leave it angling down. You're gonna need that hook facing downward. So that's the super important. Now I get to my other side. Again, I'm gonna put the loop on the outside edge, grabbing that very first knot that I created. Put the macrame hook in, facing down, and we're ready to actually start our pattern. So what I decided to do was stagger it. So I went in one and then started my under three over three but by staggering it one it's going to create this really cool effect this slanted effect now as i'm moving my way down the loop goes through the middle of the two instead of on the outer edge we're doing the exact same thing that we did on our vertical ones with our horizontal ones so you can see now that i've done my first one that loop goes through the center i drop it onto the hook pull it through the very first stitch and now I create my knot and I move on. Now I stagger again. And as you see, I'm starting to create this really cool angled detail and you just keep working your way back and forth, pull it up, make sure that you really consolidate the space so you have a good idea of how much you need. Once you get to the armrest, that's when you've got to pull it really tight and then at one point you're gonna commit and go under the armrest. Now it's time for my end, so I'm doing the same thing, measuring off exactly how much I need to be able to get two full rings back and forth. Here we go. I am going to push out the macrame hook to be able to knot off my end. So here we go. I'm gonna pull that little guy out. Goodbye. Hold my finger in place to keep that little loop. Take the last bit of my cording and run it through the hoop. This right now is going to clean finish off the right side of my chair. So you just wanna make sure you pull that really tight. And now I have enough length because I measured it to work my way back on the other side and just maintain your pattern obviously because you want the end to clean finish the entire pattern. So now when we get to this part, I'm gonna push the loop out, keeping my finger in place. I'm gonna go on the outside edge, pull the knot through, and now I do another knot while I'm pushing and tightening at the same time. Again, I'm gonna leave that little tail. Our top is done. Mm, mm. Super sweet. On to the bottom. So I decided to do the triangles that I did on my original love seat. I loved it. So I knew that I wanted the center to be seven wide. So you find your center. That's the very first most important thing. And you kind of work your way out. So what I realized after counting was that I could go under two, over seven, under two, over seven, under two, over seven. And that was gonna create the balance for my triangles so that they were perfectly centered in my chair. And when you're creating triangles, the key to that is by shaving off one piece of craft cord on either end. And that allows it to start tapering in on you. So when you start doing it, what's gonna happen is that every row as you go back, you're gonna come in one shorter than the last row. And that's gonna start tapering, 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 giving you the effect of a triangle which is really cool so i'm obviously working my way down you're going to always want to pull them down pull them down so you can fit as many as you possibly can you can see the very last one ends on one single rope giving you a nice clean finished edge and i decided to do staggered so you're just going to want to count your way in from the sides if you want to make it staggered like mine so in order to clean finish this entire thing off you want to cut off all of those tails with about a half inch left now take a lighter and burn the edge. It's gonna melt it almost like a waxy finish. Burn it right up until the edge of the knot and then use like a butter knife to kind of smush it into the end of the knot, preventing it from unraveling in any way. You're gonna do it to all of them. Again, cut, burn, smush. That's the technical term. Once that's done, this bad boy is done. Look at how amazing it came out. I'm so incredibly stoked. It's beautiful, it's clean. You can do pops of neon colors. You can even make seating arrangements like I did here. It's a really, really great DIY. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I have no makeup on, so I'm using one of these little filters to disguise that fact. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you're brand new to the channel, I hope you subscribe. We do great DIYs every week here, and I'm taking your suggestions. So if you want to see anything, you guys gotta let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.